Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to work remote and I'm gonna talk about the job sites that I use to find remote jobs and I'm also gonna talk about how to get a visa if you're from outside the United States, the requirements that you need to get the visa to come into the United States and work and then I'm also gonna talk about how to work remotely from outside of the United States for a company inside of the United States and what that looks like on your end and what that looks like on the company's end. But first, I'm gonna start off with the three main job sites that I use. So let's jump in real quick. Okay, so the first place here is We Work Remotely. I always recommend this in live streams and stuff. They have programming jobs. They have um, customer support jobs. You can see up here, if we zoom in on the categories, you can see all the different types of remote work that you can get. And usually in the programming section, all these featured ones are people that paid extra. Otherwise, it's $300 just to post a job. So the real winner is the person who made this website, not the people getting the jobs. Um, some are region-based, as you can see here, full-time Europe, full-time United Kingdom. There's one full-time North America. One pro tip that I want to give here is if you come to categories and you go to customer support, this is like one of the most hidden, underrated jobs that I've mentioned a few times. I know when you think customer service, you think that you're just going to be on the phone all day talking with angry customers, but that's not what customer support always is and so there's if you take a look at this uh, support engineer here we have full-time United States but it's filed under customer support so we're looking for a talented engineer and you're doing development see some experience in csharp.net Ruby Ruby on Rails experience interacting with customers and non-technical staff so you'll basically just be doing code for customers or helping customers solve their code bugs but you would never know to look for these types of remote jobs which get less applicants because they're filed under customer support when you're you're doing development you're doing code and so these customer support jobs here always get less applicants because everyone just thinks oh I don't want to be on the phone all day with angry customers and you're not there's things like support engineer happiness engineer that's kind of a cheesy name but come in here and you look at these because these are gonna get lower amounts of applications whereas if you go to programming everybody wants to get a remote programming job so this is what people look at and they don't even regard these other categories here the programming skills go into many other categories so if I go to product there might be one that's programming related see senior full stack developer why is this in product but we wouldn't know unless we looked our stack is rails Etc. Etc. Chad, the director, <laughs> Sarah, right? They give the they give the team here, but this is filed under product. Python, PHP, JavaScript, Ruby on Rails. This isn't even filed under programming, probably because they don't want nine million applications. Because everyone who files under programming is going to get nine million applications. Because we all want to be remote developers, right? That's my pro tip for this website. It's WeWorkRemotely.com. I'm not sponsored. No affiliate links. Just go WeWorkRemotely.com. This is. Moving on to the next one here, we have Stack Overflow. Everyone knows this elitist place, but it's actually not too bad when you're just looking at the job section. Here, you can sort by remote. If you just check the box, click remote, and you can see front end developer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these don't give salary, some of them do. They have jobs on here that repost the same job a lot, so you'll see the same company post the same position. They're just have like, they have like open-ended applications, and Typically companies that can do that, that just have open applications that are consistently posting on Stack Overflow are loaded because to post a job on Stack Overflow is like six, $7,000 just to post. And then if you want to make it featured with this little yellow banner here, it's like another extra $3,000 just to have this little banner to have it come up first in the search results. So continuing on, make sure you always sort by newest and just disregard the duplicate ones. This is actually where I found my React remote job and this is where I got it. I had a lot of leads from WeWork Remotely, but I didn't actually get any job offers from WeWork Remotely. It was just a bunch of interviews, a bunch of different code tests and stuff. Never made it to the final round. I got my remote job from here and indeed actually remoteok.io pops up with this thing. You don't have to actually search in there. Just scroll down here and again, software development, customer support, so if we click on it, it opens up the actual application. Then if you click on apply, it usually takes you to the company's site where you can apply. Yes, this is a decent site. Um, again, you want to make sure to always check customer support because there are developer jobs under customer support. Here's one right here. Junior, full stack developer, complex technical support. Now just be aware because this has the title junior in it, it's going to be super saturated. At least it's less saturated because it's in the customer support section and not in the software development section. So always check it. Let's take a look at it. There's literally no info here. Let's see if it takes us to the actual website where we can read about it more. React, Meteor.js, Git, and GitHub, Webpack. 
seems pretty decent seems like a pretty chill job actually i'm not saying these websites are perfect they do post crappy jobs sometimes an example here front end ui developer so this is your classic two for one job develop dynamic ui features and then also six years working as a, a developer so they basically want the unicorn again flex jobs now you'll see this a lot they put a lot of money into advertising you will always see find your number one remote job with flex jobs the thing with flex jobs is that it's not free you have to join flex jobs just to be able to apply you have to pay money just to access what it is so that you can apply to it so i don't think that's right um you shouldn't have to pay as an applicant to apply to a job that just seems like a scam up front it's like when you have to pay a company to be an intern that would be like a scam I'm not saying this website is a scam I'm just saying as an applicant you should not have to pay to apply to a job what is this like college all over again we got application fees now come on I, I think the company should be the one paying for the application so I don't recommend I don't recommend flex jobs okay so moving on to indeed.com here you can just come and if you're in the United States you can type remote sometimes it'll autofill remote Oregon but sometimes it won't. If it does autofill remote Oregon, take the Oregon part off. Go ahead, click find jobs. You can sort, you'll see remote, United States, remote, remote, and then you'll see like work at home or home based and stuff like that. Home based, 60 to $70 an hour. Twitch TV developer and lead web developer. Oh, Linebridge technology. This was in my video yesterday. This is garbage. Don't, don't go there. So indeed.com is a decent place to find remote jobs. Jumping back to Stack Overflow for a second, I just wanted to show you something which is you can look at the perks here and you can check visa sponsor which is what I'll talk about in a second but you can check visa sponsor offers relocation they have some pretty decent filters here some of the perks are kind of cheesy like gym and fitness great engineering culture what does that mean this is a great filter for finding visas I don't really know how to do it on indeed if you type h1b they don't they don't have a filter for it this is the only website that I can think of off the top of my head that has a visa sponsor so if you want to move to a country this is a great place to do it okay that's great Josh but I don't live in the United States so you know what the heck do I do you can still apply to these remote jobs if you don't live in the United States even if it says it's limited to some hourly time zone or some North America only what you do is you send them a message and you say that I actually work these time zones I'm available to work these time zones I know it's 2 30 in the morning for me but it doesn't matter I'll adapt to whatever schedule it is you want me to work that's fine or you can send them an email and say I'm willing to work whatever schedule you want, or maybe I could work partially if you're open to that and we could have some core hours so I don't have to be working the entire North America time zone when I'm over here in Eastern Europe, but I'll work some of them and that way we can have some overlap every day where we can communicate. And you put that in your cover letter. Tell them you're willing to be flexible upfront when you apply to it, when you know that you're not in North America, whatever the continent requirement is. Let me explain how it's done. If you live outside the United States and you want to work for a company in the United States, let's say you live in like a third world country or just a cheaper country, or you just want to leverage, you know, do the global arbitrage like the Americans do. They make a bunch of money in San Francisco, then go work remotely in Thailand, and then they live like a millionaire, right? It's going to be real difficult for a company to give you benefits. So if we have like Blue Cross Blue Shield and you live in the Philippines, chances are you probably don't have Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance. To do that, they'd have to kind of put you on payroll to give you benefits, but to put you on payroll, they have to make you a salaried worker, which means their payroll tax is going to increase. So it's a lot cheaper for them to just give you the W-8 form and you fill it out and send it back and they just pay you direct. And then you have to manage your taxes on the other side of things. It's probably going to be hourly or weekly based or monthly based. Another thing here is if you live in a cheaper country and the company is open to paying you in that country, they know that they're getting a deal on you. So they're not going to pay you probably what your country pays you. So if you're getting paid $600, they're probably gonna pay you $1,800 a month. So they're, they're not gonna give you a full price kind of salary or a rate that you would get in the United States, but they're still paying you a whole lot more than you would be getting paid in your actual home country. And if you're coming from outside the United States, it's gonna be real easy for them to see that it's cheaper probably where you live. If you're coming from like Ukraine or Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldova. If you're coming from those places, they know that, it, that, that what you're getting paid is not gonna be close to what a US developer is getting paid. So they can pay you half of what they pay a US developer and you can still live really great, but you're not, you're gonna have a rough time getting equal pay to what someone in the United States gets because the companies know they're just kind of trying to meet you in the middle So don't go in being like yeah, I want the exact same pay as a US developer. You could try 
don't get me wrong, definitely try to get as much money as you can, but just be aware if the company's open to it, there's a reason that they're open to it and they know that they can pay you less for quality work. If you can prove that you've done quality work, I think that you'd probably have a better chance not asking for the same rate as someone in the United States would get, but probably a little lower, be like, I don't need you know, the full salary or anything, I'm just asking for this, which I think is fine. For example, if a company is offering $50 an hour to candidates remotely here in the United States in North America, and you go to apply to that job, you say, hey, I'm willing to take $35 an hour, and I know that I'm not from the United States, but I'll do it for $35 an hour, and I'll still work whatever hours you want. So you're bringing them value in terms of a discount. You're willing to, to work the hours and still meet their North America continent deadline and communications area that they need to have you on, but you're giving them a deal because if you're outside of the country, that $35 is still gonna be a lot of money to you, and the company, the company's perspective, they're saving money. So it's a win-win on both sides. And that's how I recommend you approach these jobs. In general, applying to remote jobs is really difficult because it's all based on trust. You gotta do things that are really kind of outside the box to grab their attention because they're just so competitive. If, if you think junior dev jobs are competitive, or if you think entry-level dev jobs or interns are competitive, remote dev jobs are on another level. Everyone wants to do the digital nomad life. It's super competitive. So if you're going to apply, you have to be Different. For example, if you were going to apply to a remote company that has like a headquarters and the CTO is there, you need to figure out the address of the headquarters and you need to mail that guy like a pizza and be like, hey, this is my actual application. I applied for the dev job. I hope you don't mind a free pizza with it. Just give me just give me an opportunity. Just give me some time of day. You have to do crazy things. Send them a video resume. Send them a business card to the company office if they have one that's like AR, so they have to pull out their phone and they can read it and then when they pull up their phone for the AR business card, your video comes up and you're like, hey company, make it all personalized. Hey company X, I'm this and I'm applying to the remote position. I thought this would be a unique way to grab your attention. Here's some things that I worked on. That is how you get remote jobs. It's, it's not just having good projects anymore. It's not just having a good cover letter anymore. It's building that trust, building that persona because they're gonna have to give you autonomy to work and they're gonna have to trust that when you get stuck, you're not just gonna not work anymore and everyone wants this and there are a whole lot of people who take advantage of this and that you know that's burned some companies but you have to prove that you're different so do any number of things that you have to do i'm just giving you silly examples like mailing the dude to pizza or whatever okay so for all my homies out there wondering how they can come into the united states and get the visa let me just go ahead and tell you the requirements to get an h1b visa straight up front you have to have a bachelor's degree the degree that you have must be relevant to the job that you're applying to inside the united states the work requires a specialty, so if you're in software engineering, you need to be like machine learning or something like that. You have to have a specialty in this subset, and you have to have deep knowledge, which is kind of subjective. And the employer, whoever the company that you're applying to is, has to demonstrate like they couldn't find anyone else. So I'm sorry if you're out there and you want to come to the United States and you don't have a degree, it's just not going to work. So if you're going the self-taught route and you're in Europe or some other country, Chances are, yeah, well, there's, you're probably not going to be able to ever get an H-1B working visa here. However, there are some other ways to get a visa in the United States, such as the investment visa, which all you gotta do is basically make a commercial investment of $1 million and create at least 10 jobs at the same time. Not all hope is lost, but if you could just make a million dollars and invest it real quick in America and just, you know, employ 10 people underneath you, boom, visa. One other thing about the H-1B visa here is that there is a cap every single year in the United States on how many H-1B visas can be given out. And once that cap has been reached, you get put into the visa lottery. If you're outside the US, you might be familiar with the visa lottery, but they just randomly pick people that are in the H-1B visa category and hopefully you get picked. In 2019, the H-1B bachelor's degree regular visa cap was 65,000 H-1B visas. And for the master's degree, there were 20,000 H-1B visas. However, there were 94,213 applications for the regular H-1B visa and 95,885 for the master's degrees H-1B visas. So there's a total cap of 85,000 visas. So it's really hard to get an H-1B visa. Another reason that companies don't offer an H-1B visa is because it's expensive. And typically they have to pay the filing fees and they're paying you to relocate from whatever country that you're coming from though. So the filing fees themselves aren't so much, but the whole relocation with the filing fees, that can start to, I think my dogs are trying to eat the mailman. Anyway, so the, <laughs> so the base filing fee is $300. And then depending on how big the company is, if it's one to 25 employees, it's $750. If it's 26 plus employees, it's $1,500. There's also a $500 fraud prevention and detection fee. And then if they wanna expedite it, which means they wanna employ you within like a month or two months or 
really fast that there's another $1,225 fee. So them paying this to get you the visa, even, you know, they might not be able to get it for you, and then they're supposed to pay relocation to bring you over, and that could just gets really expensive for small companies, and so when these companies are like US only, this is what they mean. They don't wanna deal with all these extra expenses to, to bring you here. If you do manage to get one, you can bring your family over, and your family can work. The H-1B visa lasts for three years. You can extend it up to six years, and at the end of the sixth year, you can apply for a green card and become a permanent resident here in the United States. How come? I know all this stuff about visas. Well, that's because I had a visa. I used to live in Finland. I had a marriage visa. I was just about to get my permanent resident visa and then I was gonna get EU citizenship inside of Finland. A little over a year away from becoming a Finnish citizen, but then I got divorced. So that didn't happen. You see a lot of people in the comments, well, just go live in a cheap country. Well, hold on, there's more to it than just going to live somewhere. Let's say you're in the United States and you wanna go outside you want to go to the EU. Well, you can't just pick up your stuff and just go live in the EU. You get 90 days every six months inside of the EU that you can take. So if you want to go live in the EU, you're not going to be able to work inside of the EU. And if you go into the EU and you tell them that you're doing work for like a company there, you're going to get kicked out. You have 90 days of like a holiday visa that you can be there. Otherwise, you need some sort of working per permit. However, there are other ways where you can kind of buy your way into the EU. The most convenient way is to buy real estate property in Greece for $250,000. You don't even have to live there to be a resident. You just buy the property for $250,000 and you renew your visa once every five years. You do that once and then you do it again. And then after seven years, you can apply for EU citizenship and you never even have to live in Greece and you can become an EU citizen and then you are free to travel and work anywhere in the world. These are called gold visas. There's other countries that you can do it in. If you would like to buy a permanent resident visa in Thailand, per se, you could, it's $75,000 investment for property there. Cambodia is even cheaper, it's $300, and then you don't even have to live there. Otherwise, if you wanna be a digital nomad, you're stuck doing these visa runs across the border. So if you live in Thailand, you have to run to Cambodia every couple months and then come back and your visa is renewed. They're called visa runs or border runs to renew your visa in these other countries. But you can't do that in Europe. You can't just go from Sweden to Germany and then back because it's all part of the EU. You get 90 days, Schengen area. I don't know anything about Australia, but I know that they have a holiday visa that you can get a working holiday where you go work and like pick strawberries on a farm for like a year, but it caps out at 30. And then after 30, you're no longer eligible for it. In the UK, they have the whole Brexit thing going on, so I'm not really sure how that thing's gonna work. Uh, I know they do have a real estate, like an investment thing there. You have to invest like a million dollars into a condo and then they'll give you a resident permit, but then you have to live there. So I think the best bang for the buck probably is Greece. I think that's it for this video. I think it's been knowledge packed, value packed. Let me know if you want any more information. I did my best to kind of keep it compact. Shout out to all my people outside the US. I appreciate you, I see you. Shout out to everyone in the US. It's a lot harder to get outside the U.S. than you would initially think it would be, but most countries have investment programs where you can basically buy your way in, but it's super expensive, and it's even more so expensive to come into the United States. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helped some of you guys. I get this question all the time, and if it did, maybe hit a thumbs up, maybe hit subscribe, leave a comment. Get me back in that algorithm. I'm on journey to uh, 200K by the end of the year. That would be fantastic i know it's ridiculous but then we'll be 20 percent to a million and that would be even more ridiculous and then 10 percent to 10 million and then like i gotta do it we gotta do it guys so leave a comment for not for the algorithm and i'll see you guys in the next one